The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pizzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. <clears throat> okay, uh, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, this will be the last time that uh, Billy Ray Valentine is on the air. He is being chastised by the folks because uh, of uh, racial discrimination. If there was ever a movie that had to be taken off the air, it would have to be Trading Places. It was all about that. And what are they doing? They're taking away Gone with the Wind. It only won nine Oscars. The first black lady ever to win an Oscar in 1940. Uh, absolutely unbelievable that they're doing this, folks. This is, this, this is how society starts to fold over, folks. Not only that, but they've taken over six square blocks, whoever those people are of um, Seattle, and um, they're going to have to take care of that pretty quick or it's going to go to every city. It already happens in Chicago. They don't even talk about it. But uh, when they start tearing down the, the statues and start taking art objects and everything, folks, it's all over but the shouting. Now, whether this is a top in the stock market, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but just pay attention. There were some things yesterday that happened that was giving indication. Would somebody please, oh, sorry, Al, I'm sorry, when people Skype me, the noise is so bad in my head that it literally blows the top of my head off on these private Skypes. I've got to change the, 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 uh, the uh, what you call it, uh, the noise, because it just really, really whacks me really bad, because I only got one good ear, and it uh, hurts me. Yes, they took cops off the air also, so we'll, um, boy, good thing Archie Bunker's not on the air, he'd be toast. Okay, uh, let's move on here to see what uh, to see what we've got here with some of these things here. Let me get me got me off my, my train of thought. I'll just give you a couple things. Uh, remember the the bonds? We hit that seventy eight percent level, and we're expecting a rally. And uh, boy, oh boy, once the Fed comes out and does their thing, we got a very big rally here going on now in the bonds. We're approaching the sixty one percent retracement at. Uh, Another handle higher at 77.18. If we get above that, then possibly we could be looking at negative interest rates. I don't believe that's going to happen, but with everything else that's going on in the world, it certainly wouldn't surprise me uh, at all. Uh, the one market that I've really got my eye on and, and uh, <laughs> I want to be in it and I'm not in it is the gold market, and that's trading at around 17.44 right now. I wanted to buy it at 17.20, but the boys wouldn't give it to me. and only got the 17.29 last night. So I would like to buy the, the gold here in the next day or two because I, I think the gold is really starting to act really kind of bullish. And I'm afraid I might have to chase it to the upside, but uh, we'll have to uh, wait and see. Uh, regarding the stock market, last night, uh, while we were going through all this stuff that was going on, uh, you can't get up to Mount Lemon today, Z. Everything is everything's locked down because there's a fire there. And um, it's as you can see it, that's our house. And right out the front door, um, you can see the fire right behind us. That's only about a quarter mile, away, about a mile away. So it's not we're not in any danger uh, at all as long as Sarah stays on the top of the roof watering down the uh, house. I think we'll be uh, I think we'll be OK. But uh, yesterday when the, the Nasdaq was going absolutely berserk and I mean berserk in the fondest uh, sense of the word, the S&P was having a very, very difficult time. Not only was it not making new highs. No, there's no houses burning at all. No, this is all mountain stuff. And uh, we don't know how it, how it uh, gets together, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Okay, let's take a look, quick look at this S&P. You know here, uh, you'll see here that uh, we had uh, uh, these three lower tops here. And believe me, folks, we were down all day long. I mean, it wasn't uh, between the, on the 10th yesterday, we were down all day long. I mean, it's not a question of making new highs like the NASDAQ being up 165. 
we were we were not uh, you know we were not even making new highs showing weakness and once we went below that 3178 level that told us we were going to be going left now this is the September S&P contract we've moved to the S September contract today so uh, I don't believe because the shorts are absolutely scared to death I don't believe we're going to go straight down here but I do believe we've made some type of a significant top whether it has anything to do with the Federal Reserve or not I don't know folks I just look at these charts and I just see what the patterns are doing and you know it was all kinds of bullish news from the Federal Reserve yesterday they basically said we are not going to lose control that's what they said well you know this is one day this is just a correction hey the Nasdaq's been up eight out of the last nine days don't you think it take a little bit of a breather my goodness you know it's no big deal and when this when it, the, if the market starts to rally and I'm sure it will at some time the shorts are absolutely scared to death show me a short that's not scared to death and I'll show you somebody who's taken a vacation from the markets for the past uh, two months that's just basically uh, the bottom line you know you you can't fight the the trend, my goodness, it's been uh, been straight up. Now, we had a, a tremendous uh, move here in crude oil overnight. You know, we had a beautiful Gartley form in that yesterday, just absolutely uh, as perfect as possible. I think I saved it. I hope I did. I hope I did. Don't see it right now, but let's see if we can find it a little bit later. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's here. Well, let's move on to the next one. I have a chart here from uh, our boys from the um, Elliott Wave Analyst, and they're showing basically the relationship uh, of what happened. They, they sent this out in May on May 11th. A month ago, and they were saying that the pre-crash retracement was 82.5 percent, and yesterday we hit an 82.5 percent retracement uh, in the S&P. So that may or may not mean something, but if it does, you got to pay attention to it and look at look what's happened since that 82.5 percent retracement. It's telling you something, so we need to pay very very close attention to it. But we had all kinds of extensions that were blown through the roof yesterday, and Amazon, Apple, all of them. They were all just just going absolutely crazy. Like, please let me in. This is the last chance I can get. And now we we've turned the corner. Now the only way this is going to really affect anybody is if we we have a really, really bad two days, Thursday and Friday, and then a bad week next week, then they're going to say, oh, gee, something might have happened. So we don't know. Just follow the charts. And, you know, these are not times for, uh, you know, throwing risk out the window because these markets have turned, you know, dramatically higher from that low that we made way back on uh, March 23rd. I'm not sure about the coronavirus thing, but, you know, nobody else is either. Everybody's got a different idea. We're going to have Bill Chapman as our guest in 15 minutes from Trend Reaction, and he'll be interesting. And then tomorrow, we're going to have Rich Anderson on from Minneapolis, Minnesota, giving us a skinny on what's happening with the situation for the police. And also, we have a major re crop report today for the grains, and Rich will be uh, telling us what he's looking at in that crop report for tomorrow. So Rich Anderson will be our uh, guest for tomorrow, Bill Chapman, today. If you have any questions, it's 877 927 66 Four, eight, and I will post that chart of the crude oil uh, when we come up to the break time, which will be shortly, so you'll be able to see what we were looking at and uh, give us an idea. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Podcast. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Mr. Z from Philly on the line. John, how you doing? Well, I will bemoan the fact when it comes when they take trading places off streaming and off the air. <laughs> well, listen, why wouldn't they? I mean, they have to take out the jerk with uh, Steve Martin. They have to take out uh, Blazing Saddles with Mel Brooks. I mean, they got to take all those off the air. I mean, it's all filled <laughs> with, with uh, I mean, the jerk was that was all about, you know, my name is Nathan Johnson. I'm a poor black man. And he was white. He didn't know he was he didn't know he was not white until he was 30 years old. I mean, golly, this is uh, it's insane. What can I let's talk about something else, buddy. I, this uh, this thing about the the. The movie uh, Gone with the Wind really upset me. I mean, I I just can't believe anybody would do something like that. Oh, and it, yeah, seen the movie many times. Do you realize it won nine Academy Awards and it's still the highest grossing film ever? You know, you my stop, suggestion yeah. to you, Larry, to climb up Lemon Mountain today. Anyway, uh, uh, on to the S&P. I wanted to, to share just a couple of observations with you, uh, ones that I've been working with that I found helpful. First observation, with this break overnight, uh, with the cash market to open, the full cash market to open in 11 minutes from now, we have a uh, potential four-day island top pattern in the cash S&P index. And uh, the way I'll be using that, the, uh, the June futures, the ESM0 contract, the low price Friday was uh, Friday at 9.30 on that gap away higher on the jobs report. That was at 31.69 level. And so the way I'm using the island top idea is any rally in the uh, ESM0 uh, futures, any rally that gets up but doesn't get over 3169 leaves that island top pattern in place. So uh, I share that with you. Second, I uh, I heard you speaking about how the uh, Nasdaq 100 index and its futures was screaming higher, of course, which it was, and the uh, S&P 500 index and its futures were in fact making lower highs underneath that 3231 high 
of Monday and Monday nights, uh, I typed into the Tiger's Den just a note where I write, um, the S&P 500 is approximately 50% of the NASDAQ 100 and 50% of the New York Stock Exchange Composite, a.k.a. NYA is the ticker symbol. Uh, I found it very helpful over the years, and I use this daily, where I have intraday during the 9.30 to 4 p.m. hours the cash uh, index price charts. You know, I probably have a 10- or 30-minute chart up where I have the NDX and I have the NYA side by side. And oftentimes they're going in lockstep, but as we've seen here many times, including yesterday, but in the past several months, you know, the NDX is screaming higher, the NYA is not, is doing something different. And yesterday, it was that decline in the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, the NYA, that was the telltale sign for me in shorting the uh S&P futures, um, because it was just declining to lower lows throughout the day, whereas uh, the NDX 100 was making higher highs. So I share that as just a helpful little tool that a pattern uh, recognition trader uh, could get some clues out of. So, so there you are. Well, I have to agree with it. I think it's very important to read what's happening in these other markets because when you look at that NASDAQ, you're only looking at about eight or ten stocks that really make the thing go, you know, absolutely crazy. Uh, and we have one question for you uh, from one of our listeners. What are you expecting today in the grain report, John? Nothing market moving. Nothing. Bottom okay. line. Okay. Um, That's close enough. Yeah. The... Uh, the market moving factors here today and the next six weeks uh, mm -hmm. are what I'd say 90% U.S. weather in the growing regions. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather thus far for corn, wheat, and uh, corn, wheat, soybeans, corn, soybeans, and wheat, and to a lesser extent in cotton, the uh, weather has been virtually ideal. So there's no, you know, there's always pockets of problems, too wet, too dry. That's always the case. But overall, uh, U.S. weather for the, grow, for the planting and growing season thus far has been at least average, if not better than average. And it would take uh, something adverse, uh, too hot, too wet, too cold, too dry, uh, to threaten crop potential, uh, and of course that can occur any time going forward, but uh, growing weather in the U.S. the next six weeks uh, is the dominant factor as far as I see it. Okay, that's close enough for me, buddy. We'll keep an eye on it, and thanks for calling in. We appreciate it very much. As always, keep up the good work. Keep, um, keep your head up, Larry. We'll, uh, we'll send you a DVD of uh, Gone with the Wind. No, I already have that. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about everybody else. You know? <laughs> That's very good. All right. Okay. Bye now. All right. All right, folks. We're going to take a quick look here at the uh, natural gas because uh, we were looking at that yesterday. We had the sell-off down to the 78% level, that 168. We're now up around that 182 level. We should not go below that level if this is going to be a good market. So keep in mind, we've had higher bottoms now ever since April. Each one of those bottoms uh, has been higher with the exception of that little pullback we had in May for just a little bit. But uh, this is telling you that the trend is beginning to change in the natural gas. So look for a nice little pattern to get in if you're not already in it. So pay a cl play close attention to that one. I posted the chart of the crude oil in here. I want to do it again because it's a really good way of remembering how some of these markets move around. Just a second here. This is one that uh, was just absolutely perfect. You just don't get them like this. You have a perfect Gartley up there at that 139.80. We've dropped three handles, folks. That's equivalent to 60 points in the S&P with 
a margin of about one third. And so there's your ABCD pattern here. And if you haven't bought crude oil and you want to buy it, there's an ABCD pattern right there at uh, 36. Uh, uh, 47 was the low. We're trading at 36.74. And uh, whether that's going to be the bottom or not, I don't know. But what I would be looking for is a nice little rally off of this to maybe get a one three five pattern, maybe get the rally up to the. Uh, let's just check this out really quickly, and we'll get a rally up to the uh, uh, about two bucks a barrel up here at around 38.60. Uh, take another shot at it from the short side uh, if that's the way you wanted to do it. But that's what I'm looking at. And uh, remember, I'm just looking at the charts, folks. I'm not looking at the fundamentals. I'm not reading anything. And uh, so it's important that uh, you remember that. It's all about risk control. These patterns give you some degree of predictability. And believe me, that's uh, around 60%, but they repeat over and over again. That's about 60%. And not only that, they do it with great repetition. And so that's another 60%. You add that up, you got 180% in your favor. So pattern recognition is something that works. And we'll stay tuned for Bill Chapman of Trend Reaction, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed Developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24 7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I don't know if we've been able to make contact with Bill Chapman yet, but we'll wait till we get him connected and then we'll move on. Let's take a quick look here at this gold market, folks, because it had just a really nice, beautiful Gartley form down here, 1728. Look at this. It's moved uh, two grand in a matter of about an hour. Uh, these are really good swings that we're looking at here in the gold market, and it's beginning to look more and more bullish all the time. And if we can clear 1760, this thing has a, a really good chance, you know, to move a, 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 a substantial amount. That's the way it looks to me, because it certainly came off of that low at 1660, you know, right on, the, excuse me, 1672, and it's now we're what 60, we're 80 bucks higher than that very quickly, and that's a sign that something's good. Now, folks, I don't know whether the top of the stock market is in or not. I don't think it's that important because, uh, you know, if you, unless you're trying to get the high tick, I don't think it makes any difference. Just watch the interday patterns. You know, they'll give you a pretty good chance to enter without risking an arm and a leg. And with the market as crazy as it is and with the Fed out there still with lots of bucks, you got to be careful because they could come in at any minute and uh, boom, you can see a 100-point, 150-point rally in that NASDAQ without even, you know, batting an eye. Any market that can go up, 300 points can go down 300 points and vice versa you've got to pay very very close attention to this because when these markets move like that uh, you don't want to stand in front of it it's not how much money you make it's how much money you don't lose and you certainly don't want to get involved you know with one of those uh, particular situations now I, because of the fire that we had i forgot to uh sarah's finally down off the roof she's got her fireman's hat off and she's put her hose away so that we've got the fire are pretty much manageable. There's never any danger up here, folks. It's just a matter that it's uh, it's very bright, very smoky. It uh, doesn't come into the house, of course, but it is uh, when you walk outside, boy, you can certainly feel that you are you don't want to... Oh, boy, I just get back on here. Oh, I think we've got Bill here now. Bill Chapman, are you on the line now? Uh, I'm on the line now. How are, how are you doing this morning, Larry? Still above ground, living the dream, my friend. What do you think's happening in these markets? Did we hit a major nice top yesterday? Major top yesterday? No, not at all. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I love the hand wringing that we're seeing right now out there. And, uh, <laughs> everybody's all nervous and jerky about this marketplace, but there was a very important. If you listen to uh, Jerome Powell's press conference yesterday, and then you're aware of uh, basically what he's going to be doing for the next ten years. And they introduced two new tools that they're using within the Fed. One is QE4, and they're admitting it, QE4. And the other is the ability to uh, broadcast what they're going to be doing down the road. So we're looking at 0.25 interest rates for possibly the next two years. But what that does is that that gives certainty to the marketplace, to the economy, that the Fed is going to be doing what uh, – that they're not going to deviate off their path. There's not going to be any surprises going forward here. Uh, I wanted to – I don't know if you can see the slide that I have up yes, there Yes, right yeah, now. we've got we're, we've oh, got him posted. Sure, you're you up to that, date. You're in good shape. Guy up there? Yes, it looks just like Tom Cruise. Is that you? Wow. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> that is me. I, but, the difference between you and me is I don't get close to a camera, my friend. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead, Bill. But uh, one of the things that's going on out there right now, and... If I can get this to work right. I'm struggling here, Larry. I do it every day, my friend. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we've lost Bill or not. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Come in, Danny Boy. <laughs> Are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still with you. I, okay. I'm having a little difficulty moving these. Uh, here we go. Yeah, 
I assume you're posting a chart in a room. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I am posting okay. a chart in the room. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but it should be coming. Well, why don't you just continue about what you're seeing, and then we'll uh, we'll put the charts up later if we have to. But uh, oh, the, folks, the folks would like to know what you're thinking anyway. Because you've certainly been pretty much spot on since well, we've had you on. So, One of the things that we have, you know, despite what you're hearing or despite what you've heard, nothing has changed so far. Truly, mm -hmm. nothing has changed so far. The Fed is still flooding the market with liquidity, and we are still in a bull market. So, uh I find this rather upsetting that I can't get these slides on there. Mm -hmm. There you go. So we're still in a bull market. And I want to make that point that with the Fed now, it's damn the torpedoes and full speed ahead. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that Chairman Powell said yesterday when he was asked by Michael McKee from Bloomberg, where he Michael McKee asked, do you feel a possible bubble is growing that could pop and set the recovery, set back the recovery significantly in reference to the stock market? And Powell said simply, we are not looking to achieve a particular level of any asset price. What we want is investors to be pricing in risk. So it's up to us to determine how far up the market can go. Mm -hmm. And where are the retracements that we're going to make in the market? That's what Powell is up to. He's going to keep flooding the market. But what he also said, we're supposed to be pursuing maximum unemployment and stable prices, and that's what we are pursuing. And that's when I say, damn the tor torpedoes and full speed ahead, because there's a another $2 trillion that has to go into the market. Now, this is the chart that I showed you when I was last on in May. On May 8th, we had $6 trillion that had been pumped into the market. They pulled out the playbook from 2008 in order to revive the economy from the financial collapse in the mortgage markets. And today, we're up to $7 trillion. There's $2 trillion more to go. But as you can see, the pacing of that money has begun to slow. So quite naturally, you're going to get a pullback in the marketplace. But on the SPX weekly chart, from 2009 to where we are today, we're still in that upward channel. It has an upward bias. Yeah, we stepped out of it and we stepped right back in and we stepped above the median line. Go take your, go get, go collect some gotta, money there. Yeah, your yes, we got to hit the cash register. Stay with us, Bill. We'll be right back. Bill Chapman, Trend Reaction, folks. 877 927 6648. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Chapman, Trend Reaction. Bill, we have a question from one of our listeners. Uh, what is your, your average risk when, you, when you're trading the E-mini S&P? I do it on a point basis. So what I'm looking at is uh, the three to four previous bars and setting up my stop in uh as an average as a median within okay. those stops but so it changes I, on volatility it changes on volatility but what okay. i wanted to get back to and i was hoping you'd hold all questions because i have an hour's worth of material that i can only cover in the next possibly 10 minutes go ahead and it, we can hold the questions to the end but if you looking at you that just, S, you at, just SPX, keep working if you're looking at the spx weekly chart that i have posted there we have up in the far right-hand corner, you can see we're still within the channel, so we're still within a bull market. And it's until we deviate out of this channel significantly that we've entered a bear market. 29.29.38 is the low that I am anticipating in the near term. And what I have is my, and I've shown this before, the SPX full moon and 93 days cycle. What we're into is day 60 of the cycle and it's within those 60 day cycles as you can see 62 63 61 60 that you normally get a correction so this isn't unusual but the other thing that's going on here is that next week next week and this is this is the wd gan chart that i run and we've gotten a bit ahead of ourselves but if we're running up this line we should remain within this quadrant going forward, maybe coming down, you know, to the 29, 28 level, back to this area of support right in here, and moving forward, 3,411 to 3,439 is my objective before this is all said and done. And what I wanted to show was that the 2020 graphic ephemeris and what's going on here astrologically from a geocentric, from looking from the Earth out into space. And I, this gets rather confusing, I know, but there's one thing that's happening. We're here in June, okay? And the one thing that's happening in June is that Pluto is squaring Eris, and Eris is one of the exoplanets. I think there's 10 of them, exoplanets that cross through 
our universe and Eris was the one planet that knocked Pluto out of uh, being called a planet because Eris is bigger, but it has a 252-year revolution around the sun. But when you have Pluto, the planet of truth, the lord of the underworld, meeting, crossing, a heart crossing, Eris, the goddess of war, Mars's sister, a lot of truths come out. So, for example, the last time this happened was here in January, and what was revealed? COVID-19. We're in June now, and we've entered this phase, and we should be experiencing a downtrend. Because we're going to hear some truths, and we're not going to like them. We're just not going to like what we're going to hear. And it happens within society and within the market. They usually balance off each other. Bad news in society is good for the market. Bad news in the market is good for, you know, is usually good news in society. But we want to keep an eyeball on on J Jupiter here, the planet of wealth. Jupiter is rising from the low that we saw. And this is the S&P on top of this. And you can see where we had this area here with Pluto below Aries and the downturn in the market and slowly coming back. But it doesn't surprise me right now that we're looking at a correction. Next week is a hot week, okay? We've got Mercury going retrograde on the 18th. I have three pay attention days happening in that week, the 15th, 17th, and 19th, and I started to call it a pay attention week. It's a yellow week. There's gonna be a lot of volatility. There's gonna be a lot of news out. And they've got to settle up the expiry, which started yesterday, by the way. Having been a principal, a general principal in options, we would set up the trades. We would get ready on the Wednesday prior to the expiry in order to, to handle the expiration. But as we go through the expiry, things have been extended here. We're 15 days above my moving average and that's stretched. That is really stretched. Once you get beyond 12 days above my moving average, you're in hot territory. The And if you're thinking along the lines that, you know, yeah, 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 this is all bullshit. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, okay. We've just been banned forever, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to remember one thing. Okay, because we're going into we're going to a Mercury retrograde on the 18th. Don't enter any contracts. Don't try to build anything. Don't get married. Uh, <laughs> stay at you know. Just don't get into any commitments. Okay, this is a wonderful mm -hmm. swimming pool that I built mm -hmm. last year or 2018. The form was poured on the 2nd of November of 2018, and that was the day that Mercury went stationary before it went retrograde. And mm -hmm. just, you know, had one season of the pool, and we had to rename it. Because it's now Fallujah. If you oh don't think goodness. this is, if you don't think this astrology stuff is real, okay, mm -hmm. you're making a mistake. Because now I have to oh. have this thing torn out completely and have it rebuilt. Wow. And unfortunately, I'm going into a Mercury retrograde when they want to rebuild it. Oh, dear. So. Make it a fish pond. <laughs> <laughs> so we started calling it Pelusia. Wow, that makes good sense. So, but what you're going to be seeing here is as we come through this phase, and as the planet of wealth... <laughs> Jupiter begins to descend. We're going to have, you know, we're going right into a summer rally. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see, you know, as it rolls over in August, September, we're looking at a decline in the marketplace through October, November, and December down to test these lows. Because the earnings are going to start to come out. 
what the next phase in this economic cycle and in this recession, and I was saying we were in a recession back in December because on the street that I, that I work on, we had three pizzerias that went out of business. How does a pizzeria go out of business? No business. No business. And well, what do you got? You got yourself in the, in the, the underpinnings of, of, a, of a recession. And it was made official in February. You know, they said it started in February. It was made official earlier this week. But as the numbers come in and earnings come in, what the next phase we're going to go through is a downsizing in this economy. That's going to become, you know, the, the, the catchphrase. Downsizing here, downsizing there. Got to pay some bills. Can you stay with us till the break? Yeah, I can. You'll be right back, folks. Bill Chapman will be right back. 877-927-6648. Keep those cards and letters coming in, folks. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're still talking with Bill Chapman. Bill, you want to tell the folks uh, how they can reach you and what services you offer? Oh, my goodness. Well, this that, is commercial time. This is commercial time. <laughs> I run a website called uh, TrendReaction.com. And on TrendReaction.com, you get the opportunity. It's designed for the active trader, the active day trader in the futures market, especially if you're trading the ES, the, uh, the E-minis. Get this over here. 
And I do a, a daily forecast. Every day a report is delivered into your mailbox an hour before the the open. And what I have within the is a brief I have commentary in the beginning. I put up an anticipated market profile. There's information for traders versus first in technical analysis, the economic announcements. But more importantly, I have the times within plus or minus five minutes when you should be paying attention to the to the market. I also supply the high, low, close, second and third resistance and support. But when you see these reports come out and just by the profile alone and the end of day, how many times have you ever seen anybody call the turning points in the market? Now, these aren't pivot times. These are pay attention times. These are the times you want to be at your console trading and be ready for it. So, you know, the 11 o'clock here, the low in the market, the 1250, the break to the upside, the 1340, low tide, right up into 1455 as the flood started to occur. Uh, there's wow. a great one. There's a great one in here. This is Fed Day on the Fed announcement. And this was reported. I put this chart.